Reading through Tesla's 2021 environmental impact report is really revealing on a whole bunch of fronts, and I want to talk about a few other subjects in the future, but one part of this impact report really stood out to me, and I want to focus on that today. It looks like Tesla is really setting up to disrupt yet another industry in a way that's even more disruptive than I originally thought, and I think most people out there had thought. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I want to turn to page 65 of the report if you're reading along with me. If you haven't looked at it yet, definitely check out the link in the description. I'll leave it. It's a very long document, 135 pages, something along those lines. So anyway, this is about halfway through the report. And this page has nothing to do directly with their vehicle production, but I think it really points to, along with a few other data points, some major disruptions that are going to be coming to us consumers in a whole different environment very, very soon, which is why I'm wearing my It's speculation time shirt. If you're interested in the shirt, it's available in the merch store along with a whole bunch of other stuff, so definitely check it out. Anyway, this particular page talks about their factories, it talks about their solar roof, particularly at Giga Nevada, and also the HVAC system. That's heating, ventilation, and cooling, or generally speaking in Nevada, I imagine it's mostly air conditioning because it's quite hot there, although sometimes at night it does get cold because it's the desert, so there's probably some heating involved with that as well. Anyway, this has nothing to do with cars, but of course it does have to do with how much energy energy it takes Tesla to manufacture a car because there are a lot of HVAC units on a building like this. And of course, when Giga Texas in particular comes online because it is very, very warm in Texas in the summer months, and of course it can get cold in the winter, and you know, all of the other factories too, Shanghai and Berlin, etc. But I think that Texas will be another really good test bed for their HVAC and their solar integration because I have a feeling that given the climate, they will pretty much be using heat pumps and not be using gas energy to generate heat for the buildings. As far as I understand it, Giga Berlin is using gas, natural gas for heating, which puts them at some risk because of the whole Ukraine war that's going on right now. And of course, the possibility that Germany could be cut off from natural gas imports. So that is a big risk. Anyway, you know, Berlin tends to be a colder climate. So you heat with natural gas. That's a more efficient way to go for colder climates. For climates like where I live in Georgia and, and actually Austin is actually a little bit further south. It's actually about the same level as Jacksonville, I think, something like that. But anyway, it's rather warm, and so for most of the year, you're going to be doing cooling, if anything, and of course, especially in a factory where you're generating a lot of heat. But also, even in the wintertime, it doesn't get that, that cold, so a heat pump is still a very efficient way to heat a building in the wintertime in a southern climate like where we are. All right, so let's read the page, and then I'm going to talk about why I think this actually impacts us consumers as well as these factories. Covering roof space with solar panels. All our new factories are designed to be covered with solar panels. And of course, on the top of Giga Texas, we can already see a negative space Tesla that's going to be spelled out. So they're gonna have solar panels across the entire roof. The thing is gigantic in size, and it's going to spell out Tesla in negative space. In other words, they won't have solar panels for the T-E-S-L-A. And the whole rest of the top of the building will be covered with solar panels. So it will produce quite a bit of electricity when it's done. But in the 2021 environmental impact report, of course, this was not online, so they were going to talk talk about Giga Nevada in particular, but also New York and Fremont. Continuing on, as of the end of 2021, we had installed solar panels with a capacity of 21.405 gigawatts, with the vast majority installed on the roofs of Gigafactory Nevada, Gigafactory New York, and our other manufacturing facilities in California. We will continue to add more capacity to these and other facilities as space allows and is economically feasible. And now to the more important paragraph for what I'm talking about today. Leveraging AI to make our factories more efficient. We are leveraging six years of sensor data from Gigafactory Nevada to train an artificial intelligence AI program to safely control 195 interconnected HVAC units, accounting for six megawatts of total electric load. In its first full year of operation, 
we have measured significant load reduction compared to baseline usage. For such comparison, we look at actual energy usage for the HVAC system for the two modes under the same conditions, operations in the factory, time of year, external temperatures, etc. AI control is expected to achieve significant energy savings for Tesla as it is scaled up to control a majority share of HVAC equipment at Gigafactory Nevada as well as HVAC equipment at other Gigafactories. So first of all, 195 interconnected units. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> we have two at our house. I'm like, wow, that's a lot. You know, 195 is really, really big. And also, as I noted, they say that it operates in two modes. The two modes, of course, would be cooling and heating. That's one of the really nice things about a heat pump is you just reverse it and it basically goes from cooling to heating and vice versa. So that's a really, really nice thing. But anyway, the important part of this in my mind is the fact that they are using AI to control these interconnected units and it's already shown significant savings, although they don't say exactly what it is. And then let's add the other data point, which is from about a year ago when Elon Musk was replying to other people in a tweet about HVAC systems. Oh man, home HVAC that is super energy efficient, quiet, and purifies the air would be great. We developed it for the car, but it can be scaled up for home use. So from this tweet that happened relatively soon after Tesla moved over to using heat pumps in all of their vehicles or most of their vehicles, I can't remember exactly what the timing was. But anyway, they've moved now to using heat pumps for their vehicles because they're much more efficient than resistive heating elements and things. But anyway, they're using heat pumps in their cars and he's basically saying, hey, we could scale these things up to run a household as well as a car because it's just sort of a bigger heat pump. So everybody has been on board about that. That's not particularly revealing, right? Everyone's been like, yay. Tesla's going to manufacture a home-sized HVAC system. Now, people have been saying, like, when is this going to come out? I think one of the big reasons that it hasn't come out is that they're just so freaking busy. They've got so much other stuff going on. But another reason could be that they've been waiting on data and training to see how good they can get their machine learning or AI solution to control HVAC units. So what are we actually talking about here? I've had a Nest for, I think it was 2011 or 2012 when we got our first Nest. And that people consider that, you know, like a smart thermostat. It is relatively smart, but basically it just allows you to schedule out things, you know, yourself manually. And then it detects if you're home or not. And it turns the air conditioning on and off based on, or heat, depending on what time of year it is, based on whether you're around or not. So it's kind of like not as stupid as older thermostats, but it's not particularly smart. What we're talking about here is something that's probably much, much more responsive. So if you think about the factory situation where they have 195 interconnected heat pumps or HVAC units, I assume they're probably mostly heat pumps. These are all interacting with each other to create localized environments that are as energy efficient as possible while still producing the correct humidity and temperature ranges that people and machines and everything want. So it's a very, very complex thing. And six years of data for training is just amazing. And it just shows you what Tesla is always doing. They're always collecting data, right? They're not throwing away the data. They use this energy stuff. They can see how all of these heat pumps and everything are working. And instead of just discarding that information and just going on about their business, they've collected that for six years and they've used it to train a machine learning system to actually do a better job to adjust HVAC controls all across the factory at different zones to create the right environment, the right humidity, the right temperature for, again, machines and people while it's the same time being as energy efficient as possible. And that's fantastic for Tesla's factories, right? That'll be a huge benefit to, I assume, Shanghai, also to Berlin, and especially to Giga Texas, where it is very, very hot. And they also get a lot of sun so they can use the solar panels and also use AI controlled HVAC units to make it as efficient as possible. But of course, where it gets really interesting for us consumers is if they transform this giant system to work on a one one or two heat pump system for individual houses. That gets really interesting. You get a super high efficiency heat pump that Tesla has developed, works on very, very low energy, right? It has to because it's battery operated. So they've got this very, very high efficiency, very low energy usage heat pump system. They've also got this circulation system that they've worked out and you layer on top of that now this new piece of data that we're seeing, which is machine learning control over the HVAC unit. So it's operating at maximal efficiency. This could be a step change in the amount of electricity that we consumers have to use in our house to keep ourselves warmed and cooled. And that could be a real game changer. So unfortunately, we just had to put in a new four ton heat pump system, <laughs> really, really expensive. <laughs> we're gonna be paying that one off for a couple of years. Anyway, we just had to put one in and it was a 
about $12,000 to get a new heat pump system in. But the benefit is that our old heat pump was over 10 years old and so we should make up some of that money over time because we're gonna have a more efficient heat pump in the mix. But what if we paid somewhat of a premium to get a Tesla one in, so like $15,000 as opposed to 12,000, but this thing was twice as efficient via both the hardware, the fact that it's a much more efficient heat pump than these other ones, and the fact that it's got integrated software built in that's not just kind of smart, but actually super, super smart. So it's keeping track of outside humidity, it's keeping track of inside humidity, it's keeping track of temperatures, keeping track of weather forecasts. So where are we going? It knows exactly when you're going to be spending a lot of money on energy. We have a system where we pay cheap rates most of the time, but in the summer between three and eight o'clock in the afternoon, we pay very, very high rates. So the AI could adjust itself over time knowing that you're going to get expensive rates and it's going to be a hot day. So it can adjust itself to get the most energy efficiency and lowest cost while still keeping the temperature in an appropriate range of values. So this really opens up some very, very new possibilities to save significantly more money. And we spend a lot of money on electricity. Last month, I just happened to get the bill. Last month was a very, very mild month and we only spent $200, but we will be spending about 450 in the summertime. Well, again, with the new heat pump, maybe it'll be less than that. I hope it will be. But you know, it gets really expensive. It's very, very pricey to run these things, two heat pumps for a house during the summer when it's in the upper 30s around here. And yes, I'm using centigrade. Everybody needs to use centigrade. If you don't use centigrade, upper 30s is just really, really warm. It's around your body temperature. And it gets like that all summer in Georgia. And it's also very, very humid. And of course, in the winter, we also use quite a bit of power because we have to heat ourselves up when it's well below zero centigrade. So, you know, you've got both extremes. In the shoulder seasons like April and October, it can actually go down quite a bit and you don't have to use it so much. But when it gets hot outside, the energy usage really, really spikes. So anyway, upfront cost to purchase kind of a premium Tesla type of HVAC would probably be incurred by the consumer, but you would make it back and you could actually look at it over time and you could see like, okay, this is what I would have been using if I didn't have a high efficiency smart system. And this is what I will be using. And you could actually see how you could save money over time and eventually break even and come out ahead. And especially if you got solar panels on the roof, then at the exact time when electricity costs are the most, right? Three to eight o'clock in the afternoon in the summertime is when your solar panels would be producing quite a bit of energy. So they would really, really help out in that situation. So between getting an HVAC unit with AI control and solar panels, you could start to actually perform some sort of energy arbitrage. And of course, if you got battery packs too, you could start sucking in the power, you could use it to cool, you could also then store it and you could sell it back to the grid. So you could actually end up in a situation where you're paying very, very, very little money and potentially even making a little bit of money off of your solar panels and electrical usage while keeping your house cool and feeling good to the human occupants. So in short, I know that this is just another data point on top of things we've already seen, but this really leads me to be very excited. I hadn't thought about like really, really smart control over these systems, but clearly Tesla has been thinking about really, really smart control over these systems. And that is super exciting. I for one wish that they had had their heat pumps out a couple of months ago when we had to replace our heat pump, but we still have a downstairs unit. So eventually that'll have to be replaced. So hopefully by the time we have to replace that one, we'll have access to the Tesla heat pump. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And also let me know what you think about Tesla AI controlled HVAC units for your house in the comments. I'd love to know. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Things are going to get a little bit less busy in the coming weeks. And so I actually will probably be on Discord a little more than I have been recently. It's been quite a busy life last couple of weeks. Anyway, if you want to join the team, definitely check out the link in the description and come join us for conversations. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. 
In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.